Today's uh, earthquake, Friday, April 5th, 2024, uh, in New Jersey area was a magnitude of 4.8, and it took place at 10.23 a.m. Uh, as of late this evening, actually the aftershocks, uh, they were continuing, and there were more aftershocks that was reported by USGS. Uh, now, this earthquake uh, was not very strong, but nevertheless, it was one of the largest that took place over the last 200 years in this uh, region. Uh, before we go on, I wanted to elaborate on one item. You know, in in U.S., the general perception is that the earthquake is a thing that happens in the West Coast, like California, Oregon, Washington the state, and so on. And this is not true. In fact, uh, in 1886, in Charleston, South Carolina, one of the largest earthquakes in the history of the U.S. took place. Um, it's believed to be uh, larger than the seven on the Richter scale. Now, there are lots of stories about this particular earthquake, the Charleston, South Carolina earthquake in 1886, that uh, the water in the Missouri River started flowing backward, or the church bells in Chicago started uh, uh, ringing and so on. Uh, so uh, that's in the East Coast we have had earthquakes and we will have earthquakes. So uh, I, I just want to barely touch on uh, some of the questions that people ask, for, especially in the East Coast. For example, why do we have earthquakes? Well, Earth's surface is not solid. Rather, it is made of several major plates that touch each other at the edges. These plates are referred to as tectonic plates, and edges are referred to as fault line. Now, you can see some of these uh, fault lines uh, that are from the surface, and some you don't, okay? Now, these uh, plates forming the surface of the Earth continuously and in a very slow speed uh, move with respect to each other. At the edges, they are, that they are touching each other, because of the edges are rough, they tend to stick together. And uh, they build up the, the, basically the energy. And when that energy reaches a certain amount, all of a sudden, these plates slip with, reach, with respect to each other, and that's when you have the, basically the earthquakes that happens. Now, the faults that is believed to rupture and cause the April 5th earthquake in New Jersey is referred to as a Rampo Fault. Okay, now Rampo Fault is, is about uh, 200 miles long. Now, uh, you, on the, on the uh, figure that I'm showing, you can see this as a yellow line, okay? And there are some... Uh, reports that actually this particular uh, fault is capable of creating uh, fairly large earthquakes. Now, um, interestingly, I was looking at the media. One of the questions that people ask is that, is there any relationship between the earthquake that just took place in Taiwan and what happened in New Jersey? Is there any relation between them? Well, the answer is absolutely no. There is no relationship between the earthquake that happened in the Taiwan and the earthquake that happened in the New Jersey. Now, uh, now interestingly, actually, the, the Taiwan earthquake was 7.4 magnitude, and New Jersey was 4.8. Now, amount of the energy that is released between the, these two earthquakes are significantly different. Just to give you an idea, the magnitude uh, uh, seven earthquake releases uh, 1,000 times more energy, okay, than magnitude five, okay? Now, in the case of the Taiwan, actually, despite having a 7.4 magnitude earthquake, the damages were very limited. Uh, the main reason is that the Taiwan has a very good design and construction specification for earthquakes. So they have, this is a, that's an area that lots of earthquake happens, large magnitude. So uh, they are able to uh, adapt to the earthquake and live with it. Now, if a magnitude 
7.4 earthquake had happened in the New Jersey and the New York area, I think the result would have been a disaster. And, and the main reasons are that, I mean, the constructed facilities are not designed for um, earth, large earthquakes in the, in the Northeast, even though historically that would be fat. Now, the other thing that would be, if a large earthquakes, not even seven, I mean, I would say even six, for example, hits the Northeast area, I think um, some of the other concern would be fires um, in the mountainous area, the landslide, uh, or liquefaction, for example, not, not so much of a liquefaction, but I think the fire would be a, one of the major, major concern. Okay. Now, the epicenter of the uh, earthquake uh, was about 70 miles northeast of Philadelphia and west of New Jersey. Okay. Now, hypocenter is a point that is right below the epicenter. And hypocenter uh, for the main shocks in New Jersey earthquake, uh, it was reported by USGS to be five kilometer deep. Now, that, that's fairly shallow, okay? That's fairly shallow. Uh, now, the depth of the aftershocks were reported to be a little bit deeper, okay? Um, according to the data, that was collected in locations where, the, where there was instrumentation. Okay? The maximum ground acceleration for New Jersey earthquake was about 0.15 G. I looked at the data that was published in USGS. Now, uh, the duration of strong uh, ground motion is also very important. Uh, I tried to look at the the record of the ground motion, what I mean by, let's say, for example, a acceleration versus the time. I could not find, I think maybe that will become available. And that's gonna become a very, very uh, uh, useful data for the, uh, for the future, uh, for the design of the uh, buildings, bridges, and so on. So um, the duration of this, nevertheless, I was looking at some video. I don't believe it was more than a few seconds, the, the main shocks, okay? So in the earthquakes, it's not only the, uh, the magnitude of the earthquakes, but it's also the duration, it's uh, the soil foundations, and, and so on. So there's so many things that, that comes um, into the picture. Now, in general, when hypocenter is very deep, okay, waves that travels toward the surface are less felt and are uh, causes less damages, okay? Uh, the Ramapo fault is part of a system of faults between the northern Appalachian mountains and Piedmont areas uh, to the east, okay? Now, this particular fault runs through New Jersey, uh, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, okay? Now, the reason I mentioned that is in the East Coast, okay, because of the more of a rock formation, waves generated by earthquakes travels larger distances than types of earthquakes that we have in the West Coast, okay? That's why several states in the East Coast were reported to feel the earthquake today. Uh, but no, I saw reports that people in Norfolk, Virginia to Maine felt the quake, uh, uh, people in the Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, apparently all also felt the, this shaking. Now, one of the questions also that I have seen that one of the questions that people are asking is that can we predict the earthquakes with all these advances in the, that we have in the science and engineering and so on, can we predict it? No. For larger earthquakes, okay, there are warning systems available that can provide several seconds of warning before a major shock hits, okay? And this depends on the, the, where you are located. Now, this warning, depending on how far you are from epicenter, okay, could provide you with the upward of 15 
even 20 seconds, even a little bit longer than that, warning that the major earthquake is coming. Okay? As far as a warning system, I would say that Jap Japan has probably the best earthquake warning system that's out there. Um, the, in the West Coast, uh, actually, there are systems that are being developed. Uh, 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 beta versions of it actually is operational right now. But uh, in the West Coast, similar things is being implemented. Okay. Now, that few seconds warning is enough to significantly reduce earthquake damage due to the, say, fire by cutting the power lines, gas lines, and bringing the, the trains to a stop, so preventing the derailment. So, and that's so it's, even though if it's a very short time, but it's very, very important, okay? Now, let me explain how the warning system basically work. Now, I will say this, for a 4.8 magnitude earthquake, uh, the warning system really doesn't work. Okay, and and as I explain, I mean you 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 will see you will see why. In larger earthquakes, let's say five point five six, larger than that. Okay, um, different types of waves are are created. Okay, uh, we have in general two different types of wave that cause shaking. Uh, these are called the body wave and surface waves. Okay. Now, within the body waves are travel toward the, toward the Earth, okay? And within the body wave, the fastest moving the seismic waves, which we call primary wave or P wave, travels about 3.7 miles per second, okay? Um, this primary wave really does not cause any damage. The, the amplitude of the vibration is fairly small. And it is this primary wave that can provide advanced warning that major earthquake is coming. Now, you may have heard, the, for example, somebody say, my dog started running away before the earthquake came. And, and the reason is that animals are very sensitive to this small vibration that comes before the major, uh, major earthquakes, major portion of the earthquakes. And as a human, we are not, okay? Um, uh, so that's the reason why you will see that the animals can react to the earthquake before they even uh, the, you feel it as a human, okay? Now, after those small vibrations or the P waves, then it comes the surface waves that are responsible for the damages to the uh, constructed facility. In particular, there is, a, some, uh, there is a, one of the wave, rally wave that, that is really is responsible for most of damage. Um, in summary, really, I can say we cannot predict the exact time of the earthquake. And really, there is no need for it. Because if you live in areas where earthquake, you know that's going to happen, you have to construct your uh, infrastructure to resist. Taiwan is a good example of it. 7.4 magnitude and the amount of the damage was, was limited. Now, with respect to the, again, coming back to the predicting the uh, earthquake, we can identify regions of the country um, that earthquake is going to happen by identifying the fault lines. I mean, that's what the USGS does, creates the maps showing in different areas that, for example, that how many faults do we have and all that. Now, sometimes you can see these faults lines from the surface, and sometimes you cannot because they are way below the ground. Okay, and we get to know them uh, only after the earthquake that happens. These are called the so-called the blind faults. Okay, so the fact that the reason I'm mentioning that is because the fact that we, we have maps that shows where the fault lines are doesn't mean that we have identified all of them, because there could be some blind file, fault lines that we are not aware of it and. And, and in fact, it could cause a major damage. Now, there's a one, one saying among the people who work in the earthquake area that uh, the number of the fault lines that uh, are identified in a region is directly related to number of the geologists living in that area. And there is some, there is some um, uh, 
true to that. Now, we can also predict approximate magnitude of the earthquake that can take place associated with the given fault line. Like I said, the, the fault line that caused the earthquake in New Jersey, there are reports that saying that it's capable of uh, uh, producing a, uh, fairly large earthquakes in that region. Okay, But again, we cannot predict the exact time and day, and there is no need for it. Okay. Um, I also think that this earthquake really reminded us that earthquake is not just limited to the west coast and we need to pay attention to earthquake in the east coast as well, okay? We already do, but in my opinion, and I have done lots of research in the area of the earthquake, I don't believe we paid attention to the earthquake uh, in the east coast as much as we do in the west coast. The amount of the research studies and the uh, how the society approach to the earthquake is much more extensive in the west coast than compared to the east coast, okay? Uh, one thing that we have to make sure in the, in the east coast, we have to make sure that uh, essential facilities are, that, that at least are resilient against the earthquake. Now, uh, let me just say a word about the resiliency. What do we mean by resilient against the earthquake? Probably the best way to uh, discuss this topic is to uh, give an example. Now, the hospitals, in the case of the earthquake, uh, needs to function regardless of the magnitude of the earthquakes, even if it's, there's a magnitude 9 earthquakes. The structural frame of it needs to be functioning. The content have to be functioning because if, for example, if you have, a, if you have the, um, let's say, a hospital, that the structural is standing, but it's all the surgical equipment, uh, everything else is damaged, then it's not gonna function. If you don't have the, if you have the roads uh, and the um, uh, bridges that are leading to the uh, hospital are damaged, then you're not gonna be able to get the people who are injured back to the hospital. You have to have the power, you have to have the water the supplies for the, for the, the base of the hospital. So that, that's what it means, a resilient uh, system. As a community, really, in a, in a short term, resiliency means that you are able to uh, bring the community back to full functionality in a very quickly, and if there is a damage, you can repair it quickly. Now, one uh, 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 last comment. Um, uh, some people have asked, okay, is high-rise buildings safe? Well, high-rise buildings, what governs the design of the elements of the high-rise buildings, as far as the strength goes, it's the wind, not the seismic forces. These are, we are talking about the 50, 60 story buildings, okay? So, uh, now, you have to have a special detailing for ductility purpose. So. In general, the high-rise buildings are fairly safe, okay? So, in summary, I would say this was a, this earthquake was relatively a small earthquake. And I do not believe it was capable of causing uh, damage to the buildings and bridges. Uh, but it was a wake-up call and another warning and another reminder that we need to take earthquakes seriously in the East Coast, same as what we do in the West Coast, okay? Um, finally, if you'd like to learn more about the um, earthquake, I have posted several videos uh, in the Ataro talks. Um, uh, you're welcome to visit them and take a look. I have try to cover them in a very uh, simple language. Uh, again, Ataru Talks really is a, is, a, is a channel that I created uh, uh, and it's devoted to the science, engineering, art and music um, uh, because I believe there is a good correlation between the science, uh, the engineering and the, the art and the music. Uh, 
So in the future, we will we will have different different episodes on different different topics. But the whole idea, uh, that as far as the science and the engineering goes in Ataru Talk, is that um, I have tried to bring basically uh, different technical topics. It could be very highly technical topics, but explain them in a simple language so that uh, general public that may not necessarily be an engineer, so they can basically follow the, follow the topics. And uh, I hope that you will enjoy it. So visit some of the videos if you like to learn about the earthquakes at a very fundamental levels in a very simple language. There are several videos that I have placed in the Ataru talks that you can uh, you can view. And uh, if you like it, uh, you may want to subscribe to this channel. And from time to time, when, uh, when the time is permitting, I will be recording uh, some videos. And I myself, my professionally, I'm a university professor um, teaching in the civil engineering and uh, have carried out significant number of the research, uh, but I've decided to really produce a series of episodes covering different topics, but in a format that it is uh, uh, the general public could, could enjoy. Thank you.